This great hall has a lot of history, with one of the oldest medieval roofs in Scotland as well as the British Isles, a display of British and Scottish armory, and with distinct connections to both the Tudor dynasty and the Battle of Waterloo. Great halls were once a royal palace's large gathering place for feasts and events, as Edinburgh Castle was transformed from a royal palace to a military garrison, the Great Hall's role also transformed. Hi, this is Veronica of History Victorum. Join us as we visit Edinburgh Castle's Great Hall. What we see today is a Victorian-era renovated hall with weapons and armor, which are from Britain or captured during battle. Some of the weapons on display are claymores. These swords weigh 5 to 7 pounds, which may be why a soldier was required to use both hands. Swords that have basket hilts and typically used with leather shields or targe. Halberds, which are a combination of axe, spike, and hook, or in this case a thorn, and were commonly on display in medieval Scottish great halls. Lochaber axes, which are long rounded axes with a hook. This weapon was used against horsemen in order to pull them off of their horses. Partisans, which are long spikes with side spikes at the bottom to ward off swords. Spears from Henry VIII's army in the 1500s. Bronze mortars, which are similar in design to those used against the Jacobites in the Battle of Culloden in 1746. This building's great history goes back to James III of Scotland. The Great Hall of Edinburgh Castle was built by James IV from 1509 to around 1511. His father, James III, had planned on moving Edinburgh Castle's royal residence from David's Tower to a new set of royal buildings which would be surrounding this new open-air palace yard, known today as Crown Square. Today, the Great Hall is the oldest building surrounding Crown Square. The Great Hall was built over vaults created by James III to help extend the flat surface over the sloping volcanic rock and allow for additional valuable building area. James IV had three Great Halls built during his lifetime at Stirling Castle, Falkland Palace, and Edinburgh Castle. This was the smallest of the three with limited space, even after the upper ward's surface was extended by the vaults. These great halls are an example of the seldom built independent great hall buildings within Scotland. Similar to the Great Hall of Dune Castle, most great halls in Scotland followed European norms where it was within a larger structure and not a separate dedicated building. Great halls were once the center of the royal court's public and ceremonial events, with royalty eating meals here. Later on, they would take their meals in their own chambers, with special occasion meals reserved for the great hall, including major feast days. When large feasts were in the Great Hall, it was designed to have the high table at one end. The high table was reserved for royalty, family, and on special occasions for guests. This area of Great Halls typically had its own heating source, separate from the rest of the hall, was raised, had tapestries or canopies, and likely a cupboard or dresser for displaying drinking vessels or silver plates. The remainder of the hall would have been filled with rows of tables and benches placed lengthwise within the room for the remainder of the guests. Status played a part in where guests sat within the hall, with those of higher rank and importance at tables closer to the high table. Outside what is now the main entry of the great hall, there was a room that allowed for connection to the kitchens so that servants could move between the great hall and kitchen without guests noticing. It is believed the vaults underneath the Great Hall and Queen Anne building were used as the kitchen. At one point, this wall had a pentis or covered corridor, similar to the hall at Stirling Castle, that also had one along the lower part of the building facing the courtyard. James V later moved the royal residence from Edinburgh Castle to Holyrood Palace and continued to use the castle's Great Hall for various special occasions. This continued with his daughter, Mary Queen of Scots, who upon her return to Scotland in 1561, had a dinner at the castle prior to heading down the Royal Mile to Holyrood Palace. Mary Queen of Scots only lived in Edinburgh Castle prior to and up to the time that she gave birth to her son, James VI. The original roof of the Great Hall still survives and is one of the oldest medieval roofs in Scotland and the British Isles. It is only one of two late medieval roofs found in Scotland today. It is a hammer beam roof that is held together by the timbers themselves using pegs. Over 500 years later, the roof is in perfect condition without the need for nails or screws. Records show that an Italian mason was employed from 1511 to 1512 
The beams are decorated with stone corbel brackets carved with James IV's royal cipher and other images of Italianate Renaissance, one of the earliest built in Britain. Some of the symbols found here are the fleur de lis, which is found in Scottish and Tudor heraldry, the IR4 cipher, which stands for King James IV, Venus with Tudor roses representing love, IHS within the sun, which stands for Jesus Christ, Hudo, a cherub that represents love, a lion's head, which represents Christ, as well as the Scottish royalty, a white rose, which is a symbol of Queen Margaret Tudor, a wedding cup with the Tudor rose and Scottish thistle, symbolizing the marriage. Their marriage was an important connection between England and Scotland, which led to the unification of the two within a few generations. In later centuries, the castle was no longer the center of royal life. The Great Hall transitioned with the castle, which eventually became a garrison, used to house soldiers, weapons, and eventually prisoners. In 1650, after the execution of Charles I, Oliver Cromwell led an army into Scotland and took control of the castle following the English siege. The Great Hall became soldiers' barracks, with a new central entrance created and the building split into three floors. Each floor had rows of beds and fireplaces at the two furthest ends of the building. By 1733, it was split into a total of six rooms, with two on each floor, and accommodated 312 soldiers. It was at this point that it became a permanent part of the castle, and was called the Barrack Hall. In 1799, it was converted into a military hospital, after the completion of the new barracks that was built across the palace yard. After all of its transformations, by the 19th century, the building's true nature as a royal great hall was forgotten and soon rediscovered. Royal engineers discovered the medieval hammer beam roof, which had been whitewashed, and a push for the building's restoration began. The stone corbels required repair, which ranged from very little repair to full replacement. Seven of the stone corbels are believed to have been replaced in the 1800s. During the Victorian era, from 1887 to 1891, the Great Hall was renovated. Hippolyte Jean Blanc was the architect of the renovations. Most of what we see today is from these renovations. In 1892, the Great Hall was opened, and it is during this decade that it was decorated as an armory. This painting is The Fight for the Standard by Richard Ansel. It depicts a moment during the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, where Sergeant Charles Eward of the Royal North British Dragoons defended the seized French standard of the 45th Regiment. Both the Eagle and the Standard are located at Edinburgh Castle in the Regimental Museum of the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. Sergeant Charles Eward was reburied at the Edinburgh Castle Esplanade and can be found there today. Since World War II, the Great Hall continues to be used for important state occasions, including Mikhail Gorbachev's visit in 1984. Prior to his visit, the KGB had requested that the Laird's Lug be bricked up. The Laird's Lug is a small hole which was used by royalty to spy on their courtiers from behind the wall. The interesting thing is that Laird's Lug literally means landowner's ear. Thank you for joining History Victorum as we explored a unique building within Edinburgh Castle that was built to inspire those who visited the castle with its Renaissance art and the union between the Stuarts and Tudors. Today, the Great Hall continues to inspire with its armory and historical significance found throughout the building that is one of the unique features of Edinburgh Castle. You can explore other historical sites with History Victorum here.